Uh, welcome to Ladies Night In. For those of you who have not joined us before, Ladies Night In is where we talk about science fiction and fantasy books written by women that are under uh, that are under 200, 250 pages. The kind of books you can read in one night when you send the kids off to grandma's. Um, go and get yourself some wine. I have mine. I know this looks like a tea mug. It is, in fact, tonight serving as a sparkling wine mug. <laughs> I'll wait for you. Pause it. Now that you're back, let's get started. <laughs> I finished a couple of weeks ago Temporary Agency by Rachel Pollock, and I thought we could talk about it. Rachel Pollock is pretty interesting. She is a transsexual woman, uh, which has all sorts of connotations attached to it that transgender doesn't even have. I'm not somebody who's particularly well versed in gender studies. I wish I knew more. Um, she is open about it and has written essays for a couple of different uh, anthologies and essay collections. I will try to link some of those down below. Um, but she's also kind of an interesting lady. Uh, she has been a really pretty big inspiration for Neil Gaiman, which is always a good sign. Um, she has written something like 12 books on tarot card reading and alternative spirituality. Um, she's really well known for feminism and surrealism in her fiction and is just generally really, really interesting. There's so much about Rachel Pollock that I just didn't know. Um, her, her work that she's most famous for is Unquenchable Fire, um, which for some reason I'm having trouble finding on my bookshelf. Um, I looked the other day and then I looked again today and both times I couldn't find it, so it's hiding somewhere in my apartment. Um, I read Unquenchable Fire maybe two months ago. And both uh, Temporary Agency and Unquenchable Fire take place in the same world. Uh, it's a version of North America where there are active gods. So when you say a prayer or ask for assistance from one of the gods, it's actually possible that one of those gods might respond to you. Um, in Unquenchable Fire in particular, it's kind of taken for granted that they exist. The gods don't necessarily interact very much with humanity, and they really kind of don't in temporary agency either. What generally winds up happening is that there are these creatures called malignant beings or malignant ones, and malignant ones are kind of like demons in a sense. Um, they are malignant beings uh, that come and kind of wreak havoc on people's lives. They seek to impose destruction. And at the same time, there's kind of like this balance that goes on where there are benign beings that even it out. And the kind of powers that be can switch a malignant being to a benign being and a benign being to malignant being. It gets very kind of strange. In temporary agency, what happens is that there is a young girl who she's about 14 years old and her older cousin who is in his 20s winds up going to this new job when he's there he's kind of taken in by a malignant being and this 14 year old girl is the only one who's really willing to try and find out what's happening to her cousin She's working really hard to get her family involved in figuring out exactly what happened to him. And she finds out that the government has been involved in the placement of this malignant being. She kind of has like an Aaron Brockovich moment and partners up with this much older woman who is an attorney who takes on her cousin's case. She kind of hero worships this attorney. Um, and it's a, the first part of the book is entirely about them pursuing this, this case in court where they're seeking justice for her cousin. And the second part of the book is that same girl 
finding out that malignant beings are kind of screwing around with the political system. It's a really interesting story. Um, Rachel Pollock engages with a lot of kind of different topics. And one of those topics is sexuality and sexual attraction. Um, she's very subtle in the way she presents LGBTQ issues. It's kind of one of those things where it's not really made out as a big deal. Um, Pollock makes it clear that some of her characters in her story are in fact gay, but it's like not the focal point. It's not actually kind of a point of conflict at all. It just kind of is what it is. Um, and the main character has to deal with these kind of difficult relationship situations. Uh, at one point, her love interest is actually somebody who's much older than her, who has known her since she was a very young girl, um, and who she has to have this conversation with herself about whether the main character has been groomed for a situation or whether it's kind of a consequence of fate and has to really kind of struggle through this idea that she might be interested in somebody who she's known her whole life. Um, somebody who was at one point an authority figure in her life. And I thought that that was surprisingly well handled. Um, I am somebody who really struggles with large age disparities, especially when the older person is supposed to have been at one point a mentor to the younger. Um, and I think that Pollock handled it well, even if it's not necessarily the kind of relationship that I would like to see. Similarly, she really is very delicate in how she handles the idea of government and corporate responsibility to the average citizen. Um, one of the main themes of this book is that the government isn't always trustworthy. <laughs> and so I have a soft spot in my heart for somebody who's kind of fighting against the man. Um, Pollock does so in a way that I think acknowledges what a government should be without rejecting the gover the idea of governance entirely, and I like that. Um, she's also very, very thoughtful in the kind of ideas that she presents and how she chooses to present them. It's very clear that she thinks about what exactly she's trying to say, how she's trying to say it, and if that path to saying what she wants to say is actually going to be successful for her. She's very, very thoughtful in her writing. That being said, if you're going to start off with a Pollock book, I actually would suggest Temporary Agency before reading Unquenchable Fire. Unquenchable Fire is super, super trippy. Super trippy. Um, <laughs> And it's very, very surreal. It plays on a lot of really different ideas that are sometimes very difficult to understand. Um, I think Temporary Agency does a better, a better job of laying out the ideas that Pollock wants to work with. It lays the world building out a lot clearer. In general, I just think it does a better job of setting foundations. I think it's much more approachable and the plot doesn't get as entangled with theology and mythology as Unquenchable Fire does. If you want to jump into the deep end, read Unquenchable Fire first, but if you're looking for kind of getting your feet wet into a Rachel Pollock kind of world, Temporary Agency is, I think, your best bet. <laughs> if you have read Rachel Pollock, let me know. Um, she's definitely a character. I wish I knew more about her, but she doesn't really have like a biography out or an autobiography. If you know of one and I just somehow haven't noticed it, you should let me know. Um, that being said, 
thank you for joining me for Ladies Night In. I hope you're having a fantastic week. I'll talk to you later.